Vietnam, a country that defies expectations and has adventure at every corner. You are on your way to unlocking some of the best adventures in Vietnam with this two-week itinerary travel guide. We'll be starting in the north of Hanoi and making our way all the way down to Ho Chi Minh City. Welcome to Max Takes On The World, and this is your Vietnam travel guide. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video where I'll be giving you some bonus travel tips. You are going to love your Vietnam trip. I just know it. If you're anything like me, and I assume you might be because you're watching this channel, you're going to love Vietnam. And we're starting our journey in Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, this vibrant and historic city known for its rich culture, ancient architecture, and bustling street life. Situated in the northern part of the country, Hanoi boasts a fascinating blend of traditional and modern influences. Visitors can explore its centuries-old quarter with narrow streets where you'll find traditional shops, street vendors, and a variety of local cuisine. The city also features iconic landmarks such as the Temple of Literature. Hanoi offers a captivating glimpse into Vietnam's past and present, making it a must-visit destination for travelers seeking a unique cultural experience. One of the most unique attractions I visited in Hanoi was the Hollow Prison. Known ironically as the Hanoi Hilton, it was originally built by the French to imprison Vietnamese political dissidents, but it gained a lot of international attention during the Vietnam War, where it became a detention center for American prisoners of war, and the most notable inmate was Senator John McCain. You know, when I was walking through this place, you could just feel the energy and you could feel the vibes of just bad stuff happening in there that's where they would torture the uh, American prisoners of war and you definitely felt that energy while you were walking through this place. Halong Bay is one of the most famous areas in Vietnam which you've probably seen in a lot of movies and this could be quickly accessed from Hanoi in about a three to four hour drive you can find tours to take you there and this can be completed in a day trip which is what I did. I had met other people that did a night cruise on Halong Bay and they really enjoyed it. But me being a, a solo traveler, I felt like the day trip was sufficient enough. If you're traveling, you know, with a partner, you may opt to do the overnight cruise, which is a little bit romantic. But Halong Bay is something like out of a fairy tale. It's a huge area of green water with tall, rocky islands that seem to appear like magic. These rocks have hidden caves and secret spots you can go and check out. It's not just beautiful, it's also home for many sea creatures and some of the islands have lots of green trees. If you're into nature, you just wanna see something incredible, Halong Bay is a must visit in Vietnam. After visiting Halong Bay, you'll wanna to return to Hanoi in order to get transportation to our next location which is Phong Nha National Park. Phong Nha National Park has the biggest cave system in the entire world. In order to see this, you have to sign up at least a year in advance, but don't worry, Phong Nha National Park has a series of other caves which you can easily see in one day, which is why for this location, you only need a day here, not unless you wanna take a rest day and relax the next day also has some hiking you can do. Caves at Phong Nha are absolutely breathtaking. They were insane, the most jaw-dropping cave systems I've seen in my entire life. Phong Nha has over 300 caves and they're actually still discovering new caves as we speak. Da Nang literally shocked me. This place is a hidden gem and I can see it blowing up with tourism in the years to come. When I visited, the tourism was a little bit slow, but the main strip in Da Nang reminded me of Miami with the white sand and world-class beaches. Just down the street from Da Nang, a 40-minute scooter drive, you have Hoi An, 
Walking through the streets of Hoi An, you feel like you took a step back in time. It's famous for its old buildings, canals, and colorful lanterns. When you walk around, you'll see ancient temples, pretty houses, and lively markets that make you feel like you're in the past. Make sure to check out their night market. Hoi An is a place where old and new come together in a beautiful way. Now, if you're like me, you'll probably be debating whether to stay in Da Nang or Hoi An, seeing that these two are both close to each other. And the best advice I can give you is if you're looking to relax and just chill out, Da Nang is a perfect place to do so. And you could take a day trip to Hoi An. But if you want a little bit more going on, you want people around you, some movement, stay in Hoi An and you could take a day trip to Da Nang. I took a flight from Da Nang to Ho Chi Minh City, or Saigon as the locals call it. And for purposes of this video, I'll be referring to it as Saigon as well, because Saigon sounds a lot more cooler and it's a lot easier to say. Saigon has a lot going on and can be overwhelming to most people. It is a full on city and it gets very hot. However, it's still worth checking out. This large metropolis you'll find a captivating mix of modern skyscrapers, historical landmarks like Notre Dame Cathedral, Basilica of Saigon, and the War Remnants Museum, and a dynamic street life that reflects the city's energetic spirit. This bustling markets, vibrant street food culture, and thriving art scene makes Saigon an exciting destination for travelers seeking a taste of both tradition and progress in Vietnam's largest city i stayed here for one week but i think that was way too long i would recommend you stay two to three days in saigon maybe four if you kind of just want to take a day and rest before you head back home or wherever you're going next and again i want to just make sure you know it's a big city there's a lot going on it's very hot it can overwhelm a lot of people so just know that going into it and map out the places that you want to visit. We're now at that part of the video where I'm giving you some bonus travel tips. Traveling through Vietnam, I personally did a sleeper bus and the price was very good, but I'm very tall and I kind of regret that a little bit just because it wasn't as comfortable for me. You also have the option to take the train, which is a little bit slower but more comfortable. So it kind of just depends on your budget and what you want to do. I also recommend that you download the Kluk app or the website Kluk because there you can find very cheap tours. If you're planning on traveling through Vietnam solo, don't worry, you'll meet people just about everywhere. Like I did the solo travel thing myself and I met so many people from all over and a lot of other people were actually there solo traveling. Being an American traveling through Vietnam, so not only am I an American, I'm also a Marine Corps veteran, so I was a little worried about how they would receive me being American, just knowing like the history that our countries went through. Granted, it's history, it's still kind of affecting some of the people today and it has affected their grandparents. But overall, I would say most of the people in Vietnam are warm and friendly. Like I've never felt anything that kind of felt like resentment. Although there were occasions where there were certain people I kind of thought were rude to me. I don't know if it's because I was American or if they were just rude people, but I didn't feel like any hostility, just like upfront, like, oh, you're American, blah, blah, blah. So I will say that, and I will say it was like a little sad to kind of visit these Vietnam war museums and hear their side of the story of the war and everything, but Vietnam is a great country, and I'm so glad to say like the past is the past. Hit that like button, it really helps me out, and consider subscribing as I am taking on the world. Until next time, fight on.